hot comic book movie news Shooting up your butthole The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet Whoa, I started it again Start of the theme song again, Mason. Whoa. Now stop. Is this going in? No, no this, <laughs> okay. is all, this is all gone. You wouldn't leave something this unprofessional in. Mm, very true. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. And with me, as always, is my co host, Nick Mason. Great to be here. Always professional. That's right. Me. Yeah, that's what they it. say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone has been moved closer to my mouth so the <laughs> listeners can, in fact, hear me as I speak. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Mason, it's a big news week, isn't it? But I would say that's probably the intern's fault for not moving the microphone. Mason, it's a big to... news week. <laughs> it's a big news week. <laughs> Yes, it is the intern's fault. It is the, yes, that's right. Is that me also? Am I the intern? Ah, oh, gosh, look, you've put me in a spot here, James, by asking me to elaborate on the thing I've said. Where I get, and and I, I, it's quite early in the morning over here yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in Weekly Planet Podcast land, and I, I do not have the mental capacity to to imagine whether that is you or if we have invented a new intern. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a new bit of law that we have to adhere to. Is there to. a guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Let's just say there's a guy. Yeah, let's say there's a guy, let's invent him as the episode progresses, <laughs> or we get into the news yep. and we forget about it, yep. and then we get tweets later, people being like, what was the what deal was with the, the intern guy? <laughs> and we'll be like, what are you talking about? What are you about? talking about? We don't, we don't know. We don't have any interns. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Mason. How dare you, sir? <laughs> news of the week. Yes, I'm, I'm loving uh, this. Death of a comic book legend. Oh, I'm not loving that. No, no, not loving that either. We've got Game of Thrones news. We've got Squid Game news. We've Ooh. got Knives Out news. Is this Mr. Beast? Has Mr. Beast done something? No, he hasn't done something. I mean, he's always doing something, That's but he true. hasn't done this particular thing. Uh, a new Disney Plus Marvel series. Another live action Disney remake. Ooh. What's this one? Uh, one Punch Man. Joker 2 news. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Pixar's latest light year i mean that's movie. all that's all very exciting but i am very i'm thrilled to be talking about joker 2 news but i'm, I'm glad you left it towards the end yeah let's let's keep let's it have uh, a big build to absolutely that. now up top where we're going to uh yet again uh because because it gets louder and louder every week uh cover the ezra miller situation mm. this isn't something that i want to be doing updates on about what have they done this week oh my goodness etc but I feel like like several things happened this week and it'd be weird if I just completely ignored it, like some companies do. There's been a real snowball of a situation here. Yeah. yeah. So basically one of the latest accusations is that they supplied drugs and alcohol to a minor. This accusation comes via the minor's parents. They met this person when they were 23 and the minor was 12. Oh. And in 2017... Uh, Ezra is said to have supplied this person with alcohol, marijuana, and LSD. Uh, this person has refuted the accusas- accusations that the parents have have made. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's three parties here involved with yes. this. Yes. Okay, right. right. Uh, the authorities then were looking for Ezra Miller, mm. who disappeared. Uh, their social media disappeared That's also. That's right. right. But that wasn't before uh, posting things like, you cannot touch me, I am in another universe. Another cryptic messages. Incredible plugging for the Flash movie. <laughs> I agree. From Warner Brothers and DC Media something, whatever they're called. There was also another incident that was reported. It uh, was a bizarre and aggressive situation involving a family and, and a board game. And I guess the reason I bring all of this up is also because Warner Brothers and DC have just not acknowledged it yet again. Wild, and it's, isn't it's, it? I mean, maybe they're still, you know, because there's such a buffer zone between this and that Flash movie. Yeah. Oh, because like, it's not coming out for... Like end of next year, maybe right, mid next sure, year. Okay. I don't know. So they're like, They are hoping some... that this situation will diffuse itself. Or they'll think of something. <laughs> they'll think of something. Exactly. That's what you want. You want someone to think of something. Maybe yeah. somebody that isn't them. Exactly. You know, so, maybe Henry Cavill will step maybe in he will think and provide something. some words of wisdom, you know? Yeah, so look. It's Henry, a- why aren't you doing more to save the DC Universe? <laughs> Obviously, it's a very troubling uh, mm. situation. I still, I mean, I think there's still a chance that, I don't think they'll shelve the Flash, but they'll do something to alter it. Yeah, but I'm going to be a lot like- to replace two people that they're playing in the Flash as yeah, well. Yeah, right, uh-huh. So I, I don't, I don't know. But there is one hundred percent a conversation in in the Warner Brothers offices where they've they've put the timeline for the movie, like the the narrative in the on the movie, on a big board, and they're like, "What can we chop out of this? Mm. Can we re? Can we make this a Batman? Can we make movie? this a Batman movie or a Supergirl movie? Yeah. Or you know, and I, I mean, get- you know, as as we've previously mentioned, you know. They did it with Army of the Dead. They completely replaced one yeah, character. But that was like a minor 
like a minor character in a handful of scenes. Yeah, this but- is a different situation. I think also, and not and look, I could, I guess here's me solving your problem, Warner <laughs> Brothers. You're not listening to this, obviously, but if you just acknowledged that. You know, this is not reflective of the values of the company. We mm. still made this product and we're proud of it. And the other people that are in it, we don't want this to tarnish the legacy of everybody involved. Yeah, right. Like even something like that would be better than nothing. Literally nothing, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, other people are in and involved in this movie. So, yeah. you know, but anyway. And including, you know, there's the new Supergirl who yeah. presumably would like to debut in a way, like the actor presumably would like to debut in a way that, that you know, is positive and not surrounded by... Controversy yeah. and you exactly, know, and, a, and a, they don't want to. They don't want to be involved in a big box office disaster mm. or anything. So, and Michael Keaton probably doesn't care. He's so rich, and he probably got <laughs> even more money. Just yeah. so much money for this. Mm-hmm. So, what is like, ah, whatever? <laughs> right? Oh, it's not coming out. Yeah, oh, that's fine. It, no, I thought it was out. Okay, <laughs> cool man. Another bad news. Mm. Uh, Tim Sale has passed away at uh, age yeah. 66. Long-time uh, uh, DC artist responsible for the long Halloween. Yeah. Got a few titles here. And these are, this is a select few, but like Spider-Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow, Superman for All Seasons. Like just incredible work. This is the official statement uh, via at art by sale on Twitter.com, Mason. Oh. It says, uh, it's with heavy sadness that I must announce that Tim Sale passed away today. He passed with the love of his life beside him and loves all of you very much. Hospital. Uh, this was all, oh, this is also off the back of him being hospitalized three days before his death, and it sounded pretty serious then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it didn't look good at that point. But, boo, that sucks. Yeah, He's def- great. Definitely uh, check out all his work. I yeah, think, you know, just, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure there's a collected edition. I mean, there's the Long Halloween, certainly. Yeah, they, they were always bundling them all together mm-hmm. in various digital and physical Media packs, yeah, yeah, uh, which you should definitely check out. Did he out. do a? They, they used, DC used to have a series called Solo. Um, you think you're part Solo, are you? No, 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 James, James, James. He's, a, he's not in the DC universe. Oh, is he? James, 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 James. Uh, they used to, there was a series called Solo, which was um, it was a it was a like a twelve issue maxi series where they just got a bunch of creators, each one got an issue, and they could just do whatever they want. Yeah. So there was like a Darwin Cook one, which was really good. I think perhaps there was not a. Oh no, Solo number one. Tim Sale, Darwin Cook, Dave Stewart. Check that one out. That's a good like. Okay. That's as close as like a DC gets to to like indie. So when you said that thing, yes, you it actually you actually like you had an idea in your mind that was real. I did. Like it it's wasn't true, just yeah. a thing you like you made up. And you're no, like, is no, this no. a thing? That, like no, this no. really came. This really came good. Yeah, that's great. I know, right? <laughs> that's good for my you know. <laughs> My my whole brain situation. Next you time know? you go to do that, you'd be like, I nailed it that last time, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this. And it will have never existed, <laughs> whatever the thing is. Uh, here's some news, James. Okay. Speaking of great art. One bit of news? Did you know this? Is this your one this bit of news? This is my one news? bit of news. The iconic cover for the Dark Knight Returns in the last oh, yeah. couple of days. Uh, sold for two point four million dollars. The original artwork. That's too much. So this, it is too much. So this is for people who don't know. This is this is Frank Miller and his wife at the time, Lynn Varley. Yeah, made this. It's a super iconic image. You've seen it on posters. You've seen it on t-shirts. You've seen it in uh, other superheroes doing it on comic book covers. You've seen me. I've got a version of the Tick on a t-shirt doing oh, the same. Doing I, the same I've thing. seen it. You saw me specifically. I've seen it. I don't yeah. think I've seen it. Uh, but it's the the iconic image of the Batman leaping through the air in silhouette. There's a lightning bolt. Yeah. behind him. And, uh, yeah, $2.4 million uh, through Heritage Art. This was like yesterday. So this wasn't – did Frank Miller own this? Who owned this? It was originally owned by Lynn Varley like years ago. I think she got it Okay. in the divorce. Oh, nice. Uh, and it's been bought and sold a number of times. But currently the, the person who sold it and the person who bought it are both unknown. Okay. So who knows? But it's interesting because if you it go, was Nick Cage. You might have been, <laughs> both of them were Nick Cage. Well, here's here's some rumors. Here, there's no room. Here's here's a clue that it might be Nick Cage. If you go to the Heritage Auction page for the exact thing, mm. it's the the auction is over. But there's a little button that where the 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 new owner is accepting offers. Oh. So like immediately you can be like. If if you if you're a listener of the Weekly Planet and you're like, oh damn, I've missed out on that, you can simply <laughs> click the button and they're accepting a minimum offer of three point eight million dollars. A minimum offer. So if you want, if you're like, they're they're contemplating selling it instantly. Yeah. So if you wanna if you wanna buy that and you wanna give them nearly four million dollars for that one single piece that you can just look at on the internet. If Do you really I want. want four million dollars? Is that what you're asking me? What have you? Wait, I you, no, I have to. You pay. have to pay that. Oh, yes. I thought it was like, do you want this? No. <laughs> oh, <what? okay. laughs> it's early, basically. It is very early. <laughs> no, that's not what I thought. Yeah. That was an attempt but, at um, something. There was nothing. 
It's very good. Yeah. So Miller said of this. So yeah, this is the highest price for like a single piece of art ever. I'm sorry. Not not, not like a not, comic book art. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not <laughs> real art. I'm like sorry. what? <laughs> sorry, not real art. Certainly no. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. Not a Picasso. No, but not um, a Mona Lisa. No, 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 not the Mona Lisa. The previous record is. Uh, the cover for Batman 251 by Neil Adams, the late Neil Adams, which went for $600,000. So this is absolutely blown it out Batman of the What's Batman 251? Is that an iconic cover? I assume be, I think it's Batman. Look, if I had to guess off the top of my head, I would say oh, it's, it's the Joker and he's yeah, holding a Yeah, it's the five-way revenge and, one. That's, yeah. That was sort of the – it's from the 70s and it's like the return of of the Joker to like being the murderous madman. Oh, okay, like, yeah, Because yeah. years, for years and years the Commerce Code Authority prevented him from doing any real good murders. Mm. Uh, but you've seen that on a T-shirt, Elsa. Yeah, um, absolutely. Comics Code Authority were doing a better job than bloody Batman, am I right? Uh, He's doing the bloody Cuban crime off the right. street, et cetera. Mm. Well, that's great stuff. Yeah, but anyway, Miller said of the piece of artwork, this is some time ago, I was finding my identity as an artist and to me the silhouette is the most important language of that. When you can convey in silhouette... Sorry, what you can convey in silhouette is going to impact the minds and the emotions more intensely than anything else. I got a knack for silhouettes, and if you want a real nice rendering of something, I am not your guy. I'm just not good at it, but I can punch out a kick-ass silhouette. And he's right. Like, agree Sin, with that. Sin City is based almost entirely on it's like, all silhouettes. iconic it's all like, shadows and silhouettes. Recognizable silhouettes. So yeah, that's, that's Can you recognize that hat and chin? That's Sin City, isn't it? That's true. Hat yeah. or chin. <laughs> hat or chin. Yeah. Or maybe that's it's the yellow guy. <laughs> Is it a hat or a chin? Yep, it's this guy. Is it the yellow guy? It's, is that guy yellow? It's the yellow it's guy. It's the yellow guy, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. But anyway, I'm just going to oh. say, I guess the option is always there to like resell the thing, but it kind of feels a bit sad that yeah. this person's bought this and they're immediately like, but if someone wants but to do pay, you want it? Do, you want, do, you want, do you want to pay more for it though? Because yeah. I'll, I'll I will immediately and instantly sell this if you give me $4 million for it. It also sounds to me like, Maybe they don't have that much money. Oh, maybe <laughs> like that's they put true, a yeah. lot into this. Uh, there's also like I believe. I mean, obviously enough money to buy this. Yeah, there's also been I think in recent years it's it's comic book art and it's also and ish, and comic book collectible issues and also collectible video games. There is some sort of weird mark. There's there's some sort there of weird is, mark yeah. of like yeah. pumping up. About it. Yeah, like pumping up the values of things and you know people selling it and they've got a shell account and they're immediate they buy it for a huge amount of money and then yeah. they're like, well look, it's sold for a million dollars. That's what these are worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Whereas it's just it is just people buying and reselling the same yeah. thing to themselves. So, so who knows this, what this is. This is Beanie written. Babies is what you're telling me. This iconic cover of Batman <laughs> the Dark Knight Returns is in fact Beanie Babies. Terrific. I love Beanie Babies. Yeah me too. Mason, this is via the Hollywood Reporter. HBO has entered into early development. The way you pronounce that I'm I'm imagining it's it's a different website, yeah. The Hollywood. It's Hollywood, W O U L D. It's just a stuff a guy. Hollywood, rec- wouldn't it? Yeah, it's stuff a guy records should probably happen <laughs> in Hollywood. Uh, HBO was entered into early development on its first sequel to Game of Thrones. That's right, Mason. Yeah, I remember the setup from earlier. A live action spin off series centered on uh, John. I wrote on the Jon Snow. Ooh. On Jon Snow, as played by Kit Harrington. My goodness. Uh, this is, Still got that juice off Eternals. Yeah. This is sooner than I thought. Because as soon as this ended, I'm like, this is. This is just has off like it's just waiting for a sequel. Mm, right. But so does that mean they're not gonna look at all the other characters? I'm assuming they're gonna slowly kind of filter them back into the universe, the ones that aren't dead. Is this an X-Men Origins Wolverine? Like they're gonna they're, we're gonna spin off all the characters. Oh, this one didn't do well, so <laughs> never again, quite frankly. When did the last one end? Was it twenty nineteen? Yeah, it was twenty nineteen. So that's three. God, that was that just happened. The year just, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> sure did, James. It sure did. We're still in 2019 now. As far as I'm aware. And yeah. everything is fine. Yeah. So so they've got the prequel series coming, mm. probably various anime. George R.R. Yeah. R. Martin hasn't and won't release another book. <laughs> Uh, so what, he's too busy Scrooge McDuckin' it in his big money bin. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. He's got a big red and white striped bathing suit on, and he keeps diving into his money bin. What uh, are you? Are you excited for for this? Nope. This, see, I'm more interested in this than I am the the House pre- of the Dragon. The prequel, yeah. 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 No, I mean that's that's because like I don't know anybody in the prequel. Like you know, I, I know two yeah. characters. Okay, now character. when they say it's a Jon Snow spinoff. Is that cover for we want to do more Game of Thrones and everybody who is still alive in Game of Thrones is going to be in this, but if we call it Game of Thrones, yeah. that's home box office poison, yeah. as it were, because people were like, we got really badly burned with Game of Thrones. So yeah. maybe it's maybe it's like, I mean, it could very well be, you know, a production team or the, the studio and they saw what the last season of Game of Thrones turned into and went, 
mm. we can fix this sort of maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But if, but if we call it Game of Thrones season eight. Game of Thrones, we can fix this, we think. <laughs> if they call this Game of Thrones season eight or whatever season it we're up to, yeah. people will be like, no, thank you. But if we go Jon Snow, people will go, mm, okay. I know Jon Snow. That's right. That guy sucks. But, <laughs> but I think he didn't even get to be the king. No, he did. The other guy he stabbed his wife and he left or whatever happened yeah. at the end of that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, like his some of his sisters are alive. True. Peter Dinklage is alive. Bran is still alive. Bran is still the king or whatever. Mm. Da- Dav Davros is the, the still around. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I, the Daleks. Yes, that's right. I think it's all. Uh, I think this is just uh, let's see what we can bring back and yeah. restart this. And, and again, it, it might also be a season of Jon Snow and then he he's like, I'm off in the wilderness and I'm going to meet all sorts of new characters and then he's like, and I'm tired I'm of cold. it. I'm cold <laughs> and tired of this and I'm coming back to Westeros and look, it's all my old friends. Yeah. It's whoever agreed to return. It's whoever was in the New Mutants and that didn't work out <laughs> and they're, they're coming back for a... Yeah, whoever tried for a franchise and has to come back. That includes me because I was in the Eternals. Now, he's going to be in more stuff, isn't he? Dane Whitman. I know he also hated having long hair, so I wonder whether that'll be a condition. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he had to keep his hair long for 10 100%, years. 100% <laughs> because they'll have a dramatic he's cutting his hair off scene. Yeah. I love the final season of Highlander, the series. Oh, my God. Or possibly the second last, and he carried it on to the final season. Carried his hair. In a bag, the, yes. The final Made the sword series. fighting really difficult. I bet it did. Hey, this can wasn't... I just set my bag of hair down here before we do a duel? You're not talking about Connor McLeod, are you? No, I'm talking about Duncan McLeod. Connor McLeod sometimes has long hair, does he, depending on the era? Yes, he does, James. Wow, that's That great. is very correct. I'm also thinking about... You're up on your Highlander <laughs> lore, which is determining when and where all the characters have long or short hair, yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of sequel series, or next series, mm. Squid Game Season 2 you probably saw is officially moving ahead. Uh-huh. Uh, I did depend- see that. Depending on the, I mean, we knew this. But, yeah, but it's the now two guys sure. that are still alive from the previous season, <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> Depending on the, on the, uh, on, on so when the production starts, which <laughs> presumably it like it has a lot of the early stuff yes. has been done. It's probably going to be next year. Uh, but on, on top of this, uh, this is via Netflix's VP of unscripted uh, and documentary series, Brandon Rye, who mm-hmm. says Squid Games took the world by storm. Did he say Squid Games? No, that was me. Okay. With the, uh, Cap- I don't even know what this franchise is called. <laughs> Squid Games? I don't know. <laughs> with dire- with dire- Octopus <laughs> Friends? <laughs> with director Huang's calamari charms over here. <laughs> with director Huang's captivating story and iconic imagery. We're grateful here for his support. And uh, as we turn the fictional world into reality in this massive competitive and social experiment. Yes. Fans of the, the drama, machine is eating itself. Uh, fans of the drama series are in for a fascinating and unpredictable journey as our 456 real world contestants navigate the biggest competition series ever, full of tension and twists with the biggest ever cash prize at the end. Please note, all contestants will be shot in the head. <laughs> Do you think? First of all, I love that they've can- they're canceling everything else. Yeah, and like they did a they did a huge purge of like writers and production animation. Stuff. They killed yeah. basically all the animation, and they're just like, but you know, you know, what we can turn that into big cash prize. Squid game, squid, squid game, game, cash, squid prize. game cash, prize. Squid cash prize. Maybe some of the writers can can be in the squid oh, game. Oh, that would be perfect. That would because be, that's capitalism, that's Mason. Just, that's the perfect dystopia. Just half half of them have fired Netflix writers. <laughs> just, but what's fascinating? I mean, if you haven't seen you haven't seen Squid Game, and of course you can't have because it's the, it's the it's a Netflix show that was only surpassed in ratings by Red Notice. <laughs> A, a, a movie that everybody on earth has seen 1,000 times. But it's 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 a show. It's The, the premise is that if you lose Squid Game, you get – it's you, you just play child's games. Yeah. And then if you lose, you get killed. But nobody's getting killed in this, right, no. unless by accident. Yeah, well, that would be thrilling. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. And also Mr. Beast did this. I don't know yeah. if you saw the I, video. Yeah, it's I got remember. like 450 million views or whatever. Yeah. But Netflix would have definitely looked at that and gone – Okay, yep. We're gonna we're gonna do. That. Imagine Mr. Beast is like, I'm gonna build a real Netflix recreation of the Squid Games yeah. Netflix recreation. Oh, see, that's that's what I'm loving, James. I'm loving this. Is it some sort of Uraburus? Is it the snake eating its own tail? Probably not. But let's call it that. Let's see if we can get that going. Yeah. Uh, would, how about the, would you do this show if no. you for some reason got the opportunity to go on it? Would you do it, James? Sometimes, like. You might go out. Maybe there's a you, there's a picnic in a park or something like that. And then there's like you park your car, and then there's a fence. Yeah. 
to to go into the the park area to to go have your picnic. Mm. I'll I'll walk along the fence to find the lowest bit in the fence to walk up to step over. Yeah, like I won't. I won't. What if you can't? I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying you is won't my struggle through the no. But the thing about okay, here's the other thing about Netflix. <laughs> or I'll just wait for the gap in the fence and I walk through the. Yeah, so no. I what totally... I'm saying is my my it's it's not really a fitness thing. It's more of a motivation thing. I'm like okay, because be... also it's not a very like it's not a, always a physical competition. That's true. Yeah. And here's the other thing: a lot of these games aren't very interesting if you're not going to shoot someone in the head at the end, right? Like t- take a take or a they honey. Fall through... Yeah, they fall through the floor. Or whatever. Take a honeycomb and. Like chip it, like that's boring. Like, yeah, I mean, it's because it's it'll just be people going, oh, I broke it. Mm. Oh well, see ya. Yeah. Also, is it gonna be <laughs> just walk just walk out through that door? You'll be in the car park. <laughs> yes, yes. Also, is it because you know part of the the tension of Squid Game is that all the characters have they have some gr- you know great motivation for being there, and we meet them and we learn their backstories exactly, and, and we go, oh, they really need that money, or they you know are they going to add that element? Probably, I, I think so. There'll be yeah, I guess my I guess the tension will be sad backstory and not being shot in the yeah, head. So exactly, hmm. I was uh, I was one of the writers in Santa Clarita Diet. <laughs> and I'm here, the one that got cancelled most. Oh, I see the, what's the happening there. Okay, I'm right. doing a character. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Their character is that they're just a normal person. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> With my voice. Mm. Terrific. So there you go. Anyway, I'm very excited to probably not watch this, if I'm honest. Yeah. I didn't really like the Mr. Beast video either. Like, I watched it and I'm like, yeah, no, okay. Like, it's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get right. me wrong, but I'm like, I don't care about this. Yeah. Would you say it was? Because, the th- the you know, the thing about the, the original production of Squid Game is that the games were not... Like we've said, they they weren't like spectacular. It's not like you're leaping from a tower that's a thousand feet high or whatever. It's yeah. just kind of like moderately exciting yeah. setups, like Ninja Warrior or whatever. Yeah. Was Mr. Beast on that level? Like was he exactly Yeah, it was the same? I mean, I, I know he CGI'd some like, you know, the bit with the the, the rope pull. Like he oh, yeah. CGI'd it to make it look taller and whatever. Uh, I see, right, right. Yeah. So do you think Netflix will do you think they'll surpass that? Do you, think do you think there'll be new games? I think there would have to be new games because otherwise, again, this is boring. Mm. It's a boring show. Do you think there'll be? Do you think there'll be some underhanded like situations going on? Maybe there'll be underhanded because there have situations. to be underhanded situations, yeah. right? You got to build in all the elements. Yeah. Do you think the final game will still, in fact, be Squid Game, a game that is largely nonsensical <laughs> to to <laughs> non Korean audiences? Jump into a what, you're one. You foot have to run then, one way and then you have to you're switch in a circle feet or and then a square. You have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it'll just they'll just swap in that? I, they'll probably just swap in that game from Gladiators where you've just got the big pommel and you hit <laughs> yeah. each other with I it. I think Mr. Beast swapped it for like musical chairs or something, okay, I want to say. Right. But I, I can't remember. I mean, that's not crazy. That makes a lot of sense in that it's like if you're an American audience or if you're even American players, you don't yeah. care about the the fun of it is you're like, oh, this is a kid's game, mm. but it's there's so there's so much money at stake. Or if whatever. it was down ball, I would win Mason. Yeah, you reckon I'd you could get do to it the down. end and I'd do a big down ball serve. What? But I, I'm sure they did this, but did did Twitter do Australian uh, Squid Game games? Like what it would be? Probably it was like get a meat pie from the pub or whatever. <laughs> just, sure, you know Australian stuff. Sure, I mean, and that would be quite difficult in so far as you can't really get a meat pie at the pub. <laughs> Not really. Very difficult, actually. <laughs> Convince the chef. At the to RSL not, to, to the, make you a pie. <laughs> they might have some pie. You might get a pie and a salad, Mason. I get Yeah, maybe if there's a special on. RSL um, menu. <laughs> but it won't... Uh, maybe uh, there'd be a pie. It'd be one of those pies that's just like a dish with meat in it and they pie the top. No, no, they'll just get some frozen pies in. That's oh, how yeah, they that do would it. be a bad idea. No, I'm looking at here at the, uh, the, the, the mains. Mm-hmm. It's not looking good, Mason. Mm. Let me check. Porterhouse steak. You got your beef burger, obviously. You got your Thai grilled beef salad, which nobody ever orders. No pie. Wow. Incredible. Th- that is three Thai items. Well, that's Squid Game, baby. <laughs> that is Squid Game. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a Thai squid salad. So there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Mason. Yes. Knives Out 2 has a, has a title. Glass Onion, right? Oh, it's called Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. I guess I was wrong. You were. Mm. It, the cast includes Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, uh, Janelle uh, Monet. Catherine Hahn, Kate Hudson, Ethan Hawke, David Batista, among many others. Yeah. And Daniel Craig. And Daniel Craig. I mentioned him up top, Mason. No, you did. It's true. And presumably Anna de Armas is probably I don't in. think she is. That's I think wild. she's living in that mansion or whatever. She's probably living in that mansion. But I think it's it, – look, and I, far be it for me to be like, Ryan Johnson, you don't know how to write. But like yeah. – But go on. 
Well, Ryan Johnson, I think you missed a trick. Like, why wouldn't they be a detective team up? Yeah. Maybe it's a surprise, maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe she'll yeah. pop in for a little cameo. But that's, he knows, he again, knows what he's doing. great cast. Yeah. That's good. A lot. Of, I saw a lot of people being like, this is a real step down from the last cast. And it's like, I don't think is it, it is. I don't think so. I think, I think you, like. Because you saw it and you're like, that would have been a cast. Yeah, like, well I, together. you know. I think Don Johnson was really good in it, but if you if if somebody said Don Johnson's going to be in this, I'd be like, is that exciting to me? That's yeah. not he's not like the A list. He's no. not Brad Pitt. You no. know what I mean? He's just you know he was just good in the movie. So I think it, it, anyone and anybody could be good in this. I completely agree. Mason. I don't know. Does Janelle Monae do a lot of acting? I don't. Uh, I I guess. Great. Let me check. Because she's a singer, James. Yes. No. I know. I'm just checking. Okay. If she's on the um. Okay. She was in Antebellum. Oh. She was in Moonlight. Oh. I haven't seen Moonlight. I also haven't seen Moonlight. We should watch Moonlight. And then you're like, ooh, that's yeah, that's good. That's a good <laughs> movie. Good. So. She'll be good in Glass Onion, I believe. <laughs> there you go. What I did notice is the Glass Onion font is the Chinatown font. From the movie Chinatown. The movie Chinatown. Never yeah. seen Chinatown. It's a good movie. But I have seen its sequel. Double Chinatown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two Chinatowns? Two Chinatowns. In this economy? <laughs> Across from each other on the beach? <laughs> Which one do you go to? Basic it, economic question. In the second Chinatown, does he still have the thing on his nose? No, he doesn't have still have I just thought they might nose. have been like, no. is it Roman Polanski again, the second one? The two Jakes. I don't think it is. I'll check. Yeah. I'll check. Have you seen? So you've seen the I've two Jakes. I've never seen any of the okay, right. Chinatown's say, right. movies, though. No. Neither of the Chinatown's <laughs> movies. <laughs> Directed by Jack Nicholson. Whoa, really? Okay, all right. Apparently it's okay. Yeah, it would be okay, yeah. There you go, 1990. There you go. Fun stuff. The year 1990, can you imagine it? Yeah. I just, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think about it all the time. Mason, this is by THR. Yes. There's a Wonder Man series in development. Wonder Man. So this is developed by Shang chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings director, Destin Daniel Cretton. Mm-hmm. It's now Wonder Man. Go on. He was played by Nathan Nathan Fillion in a Guardians 2 deleted scene. Oh, that's right. And we can see some posters in the background of maybe that movie and some others where he's where that actor, Simon Williams. Simon Williams, yes. Is playing like Tony Stark in a Steve Jobs esque. Yeah. So, for people who don't know, so Wonder Man in the comic books is an actor and then he got sort of powerfully irradiated by something and he's sort of an energy being. Yep. So, uh, yeah, cool. Has little belt rockets, lets him fly. That's fun. Mm. It's also said via, via Variety that uh, it's a Hollywood satire. Okay. Though that makes sense. I is, mean, this is not 100% confirmed, they also say. Mm. So is this a Nathan Fillion situation? A Nathan Fillion joint, perhaps he Or is. do you think they're going to recast this role that – I mean, people are mad on Nathan Fillion, though. You know, he's got a, he's got a very vocal fan base. It is wild that – I mean, has he ever been actually cast in the role that fans want him to be in? Because he wasn't – He wasn't Nathan Drake. He wasn't Nathan Drake, although he's in that fan, fan film that people like. Yep. He wasn't another thing, was he? No, he another thing that he wanted thing. that he wanted. Oh, definitely, he to wasn't be another in. thing that he wanted to be in. I don't know. Does it? I mean, again, beloved. I guess. I mean, if it's a TV show, he's a you know. Yeah, he's and a, he's in that the rookie or whatever. Oh yeah, that's a popular show. He was show, in Castle for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was in Firefly. Remember that show? He was in Firefly. Is yeah. that coming back? Yeah, it <laughs> is. Yeah, if we just more, just a few more signatures, and we're going to get that. <laughs> we're going to get out, get off the ground. <laughs> Yeah, but Wonder Man is sort of, you know, Wonder Man, I, I believe, was originally intended to be a parody of Wonder Woman. Okay. So, uh, well, that's very clever. He's very clever. How'd so. they think of that? Well, Stan Lee's just good with the ideas, he's, baby. Uh, he's zipping and he's zapping, isn't he? Mm. Well, he was. He's dead now. Wow. So there you go. Wonder Man TV series. Why not? Let's go. James, here we go. Here's the origin of Wonder Man. You ready for this? I am. As with a lot of uh, famous heroes men. and men, uh, his origin is all to do with embezzlement. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the son of... Rich industrialist Sanford Williams, he embezzles money, he goes to jail, he blames Tony Stark for some reason. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and then Zemo, Baron Zemo, yeah. he puts him in an experiment and he's transformed into an ion-powered being with ionic powers. Oh. So maybe Zemo will be in this. Maybe Zemo will be in it. Or they just will ha- make it a different guy. Yeah, they could make it a different yeah, guy. Because that they? actor might be too expensive now. So, yeah. You know? nah, I think he's, he'll do it. <laughs> sure. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put all the money into the acting and the volume and then they put mm. stacks and boxes up and it's fine. It's true. <laughs> so they do it on Disney+. Yeah, Plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. And his brother is the Grim Reaper as well. Not the Grim Not the Reaper. actual Grim Reaper. Not the actual Grim Reaper. No, no, no. He's yeah. just a guy with a, like a scythe arm. Right. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And he spins. He can fly He's got a it. helicopter scythe arm. We fought him He's in, in that a, video game. video yeah. game that we did that time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mason, go on. Uh, this next bit of news is via deadline. Ooh. And let me just preface this by saying, what's your favorite uh, Guy Ritchie live action Disney remake? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, probably Aladdin because that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> yeah, currently. cool. Okay. Yeah, great. Well, that's... Is that about to change? Is the hierarchy of my <laughs> favorite Guy Ritchie produced live action yes. remake about to change? It might because uh, Guy Ritchie is making the live action uh, remake of Hercules <gasps> with the Russo brothers producing oh this is on the tail end of like the disney renaissance era mm, it yeah, was right, like right. this and tarzan and then it all fell off a cliff yeah mm-hmm. um there are, there's still obviously good stuff after that treasure planet for one mason is an incredible movie i've heard that uh <laughs> uh what do you think of that Great. what does guy Ritchie think of it oh, yeah. Yeah. in it yep that's what he's probably thinking and yeah, yeah. saying to himself no i think he's posh actually do you think i think posh? yes i'd say he's posh oh he's just pretending yeah 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 <sighs> It's good acting. So there you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, that makes sense. He'll make this and then he can make four movies about a, a, a guy who sh- shoots people in a pub or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Pub know? shooter. <laughs> pub shooter. <laughs> He's got a pub shooter. Uh, so there you go. That's going to be something. Like, what's a pie? You can't get a pie in a pub. Maybe you can in the UK. I don't know. You get a scotch egg. What about like a, like a, you know. They, James, when's the last time you had a scotch egg? Never in my life. Really? They're great. Well, are they? Yes. What? Explain the process. It's an egg. Yep. It's a soft boiled egg. Yep. Love and, that. And then it's got sausage meat. It's surrounded in do sausage meat. Do they take meat. the, um, the, the shell, shell off? The they egg. do take the shell off. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, that's right. What? And then they put in sausage meat. Sausage meat. And, and then they, they bread it, it and they fry it. Yeah. Sounds horrible. Yeah, they are. I love yeah. them. It sounds like a, like a. Hard like to a, get them in Melbourne. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd imagine so. <laughs> I can make one myself, but I get, want to. You can't get them in an RSL. Because if I learned to make them at home, mm. I'd have two a day until I died. <laughs> Which would be next week. Be next week, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Uh, wow. Do you like One Punch Man? Yes. Did you watch the second season? Yes. Yeah, I started it and then I something happened. Okay. I think something, like I had to open a window in my house and I did it and I came back and the TV had gone to a like a... I don't know, like, you know when it goes to, like, a weird mode when you step away for too long? Is your TV haunted, James? Yeah, it's haunted. You know, know when you go, you go to open a window, and then because that window was just, I thought it was closed, but the window was open weirdly, so I went over to close the window. Then I came back to the TV, and there was just a void there. Yeah. And voices? And I it don't said, know. boo. Well. Wait, is that booing me, or is it a ghost? Probably both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's sort of scary, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, I haven't finished One Punch Man Season 2, but I really enjoyed Season 1. But the writers... Of Venom and Jumanji, the next level, Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinker will be writing One Punch Man with director Justin Lin attached. Ooh. Of course, recently left uh, Vin Diesel in his dust. Ooh! Because <laughs> he left for Fast and Furious. So yeah. obviously uh, there's no bad blood in Hollywood towards this guy. No, evidently not. Evidently no. not. So. But, I mean, this brings up the question once again, who do you cast as One Punch Man? You get a very handsome man and shave their head. Yep. You get Michael Serra, mm-hmm. who's also handsome but in a different way. But like you need a like a I think you have to go Asian as well. That's probably true, also, yes. What's uh who's the guy who plays um Randall Park? Randall Park. Yeah, that guy. He's too handsome. <laughs> Is he with a yes. shaved head? Oh, great question. Yeah. Mm. Can you Google bald Randall Park and see if somebody's <laughs> done it? Hang on, let me just check who plays Randall Park. Okay, great. I really like Is that. Is it the actor Randall Park? Um actually it's not. That's interesting. He's not bald. He's never been bald for even for a second, yeah, this guy. Sure. Not even if I've, I've I, got him in a hat here. See, but I figured somebody would have photoshopped it. So Yeah, but he's not what I mean like Can you do that face app thing and make him bald? I can actually. Let's yes. do it later. We'll I'll do, do it, it I'll do it during the show I'll and do it then I'll the do show, it. And then okay. we can be like quick Randall Park <laughs> fantasy bald casting <laughs> update. There he is, we could say. All right, I'm going to do it. But I just like again like uh, uh, I I cannot stress this enough. Very handsome man. Yeah, I know. But yeah. by by normal standards, but by Hollywood standards, he's not like Keanu Reeves, for example. Oh, because he was in that movie with Keanu right. Reeves. Because I feel like the prem- the whole premise. Do we ever see One Punch Man pre? Yeah, he's got hair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I think he needs to be somebody completely unassuming, like the most average looking man. Yeah, but that's not how Hollywood ever casts anything. No, exactly. But we know a lot of people who you know are comedians, and they often go out for auditions. And often yeah. the 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 audition brief is like a real slob, just a real three out of ten, just, just a, a guy just the like ugliest man in the world, eat out of a bin. And anyway, we're bringing you in for this, and then they audition, <laughs> and then you just get a regular handsome guy to do it because <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, people have to look at this, people have to uh, exactly. look at this person. All right, there you go. One, I've done it. 
too handsome. He is no. handsome, I know. But no, I think that's... But also, like, he's got a regular body, which is kind of like One Punch Man. Like, One Punch Man is ripped, but he's not giant. Yeah, right, 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 okay. Yeah. I don't he know. looks good bald, though. I mean, if... I agree. If Randall Park, if you're out there, lo- I don't know if you're losing your hair or what. He doesn't look like he's losing no, I don't think any he, hair at if, all. If anything, he's gaining hair, but I'm just saying yeah. that's an option for you. Yeah. Um, it's not a... I think that's it's... Randall Park with long hair. He looks good. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, wow, he could be a, he could be in a movie in the seventies. He could be uh, he could be an, one of the Anchorman news team guys. <laughs> he definitely. Um, did. Yeah, I think he's got too much charisma. That guy. You kind of need a yeah, but wouldn't you rather get a guy with too much charisma playing it straight? Yeah, I guess I probably would. And yeah. funny yeah. than a boring guy. That's true. That's, yeah, that's not pleasant to watch. <laughs> a boring, unpleasant guy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, you're probably right. Anyway, just a thought. Mm. Just a thought. Yeah, I think it should be Randall Park. Okay, but uh. I'm also open to whatever the person they've already got in mind. Sinead O'Connor. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Nothing would compare mm. except for Randall Park, who I think would be amazing. She can rip up a picture of the Pope in one punch. Is that true? Yeah. Even if it's laminated? Even if it's laminated. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, double laminated. <laughs> double laminated? Yes, in a wow. frame. <laughs> Mason? Yes. This is by a deadline. No, no, I just did this bit. Mason, this is by a THR. Last bit of news for the week. I'm ready. The Joker is back. And this time he's bringing a friend. Uh, Lady Gaga is in early talks to star opposite Joaquin Phoenix. Is this true or is this just a this legend? This is true. Okay. In di- early talks. Okay. Uh, in director Todd Phillips' sequel to The Joker, uh, the Oscar winning $1 billion grossing movie, et cetera, and so forth. If the deal goes f- f- forward, it's said that Gaga will play Harley Quinn. Whoa. But wait. That's not all, Mason. And, of course, because he was, uh, if we recall, he was incarcerated in a mental institution yes. at the end of the last one. Presumably she'll be Harleen Quinzel. That's right. So this might be a movie that's set entirely in the mental hospital. Or they'll get out and do crimes. They'll get out and do or crimes. Or afterwards they'll be like, did they even get out and do crimes? Or they never oh, the hospital? Or yeah, is this some yeah, kind yeah. of sick, twisted, and shared fantasy? Mm. Sources say the sequel is also a musical. Yes. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing about this. Yep. Look, and I, I they, they couldn't have – maybe this is true, maybe this is not true. Maybe they couldn't have kept it a secret forever. But yeah. I feel – this feels to me like one of the greatest Hollywood missed opportunities of all time by <laughs> telling people this people this in advance. Okay, sure. What if they didn't? <laughs> and then everybody who loved Joker – It's like everyone got Sweeney Todded. Yeah. Like, I love Johnny Depp, but I don't – what, this is a musical? Because none of the trailers are – Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them weren't But musicals. just imagine if everybody went in – Yeah. And, and he was like – and Joker was like, oh, I feel like we live in a society and I'm so, so tired of – I'm sick of this lo- – I want to I want to destroy the whole world. And then Harley's like, why don't you sing about it? And he's like, I will. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'll do it. You know, that would be – that would – Upset so many that. people. That's the most chaotic move I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah no, you're absolutely like right. That, has there ever been, I wonder, a movie that wasn't a musical and then the sequel was a musical? There's no way we'll be able to figure this out in the time allotted. But have you, Did you say this to me the other day or did somebody so. else say I feel like I people heard on that the internet may have, People yeah. on the internet may have asked this. How do I even Google this? I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. Non. The thing is we'd need somebody who actually knows something about movies. <sighs> To, to Where know. will we even go for that? Not us, certainly. Because of the people I know in my regular life, that's us. Alexi? Yeah, that's true, actually. Is there time? Yeah, text I'll, him. I'll, okay, hang on. Can you text him? Yeah, I will. Hang Do on. you have his text number? No, but I'll send him a tweet. Send him a tweet. Uh, an open tweet? No, I'll send him a... I'll send him a I number. can put it in the Great Mates group. Okay, sure. Sequel that's not a music... Wait. Movie that's <laughs> not a musical uh-huh. that's... Sequel is a musical. There we go. Nice. Any results? Just nonsense. No. Okay. This is a this is a bad thing. To, to... Muppets? Are they all? Are they all? I guess. I don't know. I don't all think right. this exists. Okay. Because I'm sure there'd be something where you'd be like, well, that this has a musical number in it. But we're yeah. talking a flat out musical. Uh-huh. But is this a flat out musical, or is it just like there's a couple of numbers in it? Because there's a difference. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The, exactly. There might be like one. Big musical number, a la him dancing on the stairs yeah. in the first one, and it's it's a it builds up to that set piece, and maybe he sings, but maybe it's all a dream, James. Exactly. I think some of this will be a dream. I think you'll find. Mm. Yeah. Had the message sending going. I've sent it. Great. So now we just hold our breath. Yeah, we did. That's very true. Yes. And do the rest of the show. Yeah, Can yeah, you yeah. do both? Can you hold your breath and do the rest of the show at the same time? Yeah, I've time? got a circular breathing thing. I'll just talk through my That's nose. That's not holding your breath, though, is it? I think it is. Well, okay then, mm. Mason. Both of, us, both of us saw a movie. Yes. Both of us saw a movie. It's called The Movie Lightyear. It yes. had a budget of $200 million. I see that. 
I guess. Chris Evans is in it. So. Yeah, I know, but like 200 for an animated movie? Is this the is most that expensive? Not, is that not... Is that that seems standard? not? I think they're like they're like hundred max normally. Aren't How they? much was the last one? What was the last one? Turning red. I'm gonna look it up. That went to Disney Plus, so I bet it wasn't. Yeah, that probably. Much. Let me check. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you to a Mason. Okay, great. Budget was 175 million. Okay, fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is pretty standard, and that had not really anyone <laughs> famous in it. Did That's it? true. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking this is, and I mean you know production wise. Oh yeah, it, it looks, looks amazing. Like, it looks course. amazing. And all yeah. the armors look very like you know tactile, look, tactile and, and textured and thick. They look, everyone's got a big thick armor on. They certainly do. Uh, anyway, so it's early days, but the box office uh, domestically in the US is looking to be between 70 and 85 million, and the global start is being eyed at 135 million dollars. My goodness. What do you think the story was? Oh, James, let me tell you this. In 1995, yep. a little boy named Andy, he mm-hmm. went to see a movie. Yep. And, and after seeing the movie, he's like, oh, I love this movie. I'm going to get an action figure of this movie. Anyway, this is that movie, what he saw yeah. in the theatres and he's like. And, and you look at this and you go, yeah, six-year-old would love this movie, you know, just a, just a sad, poignant tale about, <laughs> about, about... Confusing time travel. About <laughs> loss and about, you know, the world passing you by because you're obsessed with your work. And it's a real... It's a re- just the movie Interstellar, but it's, but it's uh, animated. It's yeah. a real Christopher Nolan's buzzkill light year is what this movie is. <laughs> Now, let me, here's the thing that I have been holding off on asking you. Okay. Because you, so in the in the in the the premise of this for people who the movie Toy Story. Yeah. If you've seen Toy Story, you have. Andy is a little boy and he loves. He gets a new toy, Buzz Lightyear. Yep. And he it's because he's seen the movie Lightyear. Mm-hmm. This, the premise of this movie is that that's this is the movie that he'd seen. Or is it? I want to talk about that. Okay. Now, your son, yeah. you saw this with your son, who, according to my calculations, is somewhere between 3 and 25 years That's of age. That's correct, yes. So, and he, so he's roughly... He's in the prime age for something like this. And he is like he is the this, roughly the same age that canonically I think Andy was when sure. he saw this movie. Did your son like this movie? He liked it, but he hasn't talked about it at all. Did, was, I he don't... Like, was he like, i got to get an, a, nah. a Buzz Lightyear? Well, he's got a Buzz Lightyear oh, well. from a few years ago. Uh-huh. But he's just... I, I don't believe that this would inspire anything. <laughs> I, I think it's obviously the opposite. Yeah, right. That this was made because the Toy Story movies yeah, are course, so yeah. good. Yeah, Obviously, because that's what actually happened. Yeah. But this is like... This I think is, this movie is pretty solid. It's into, fine. Like, it's solid and I think maybe kids a little bit older than your son. I don't even know. I don't know because... Or is this like Tomorrowland, a movie that nobody... <laughs> that, I think it's more Tomorrowland, a movie for nobody. For nobody. Made by the adults. The guy who made it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For nobody. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels like... if you So so this is in the trailer, I think. Yeah. So I don't think it's a spoiler. So the, uh, Buzz Lightyear and, and, a, and a team of... Buzz Lightyear's. A team of Buzz Lightyear's, they're... they're they, they, they're in a big ship yep. and they get diverted. They're in a big ship. Everybody's this, this, all these, I think, colonists or just a... just a Some kind of space exploration. Thousand strong yeah. crew, like yeah. a space exploration ship. They're on their way to somewhere and uh, Buzz Lightyear is woken up by the computer because there's, a, there's an interesting planet mm. to be scoped out. And he and a small team uh, go out to explore. The, they, they land the ship and ex- go to explore it, the planet, and... They find the planet is actually quite hostile. There's all sorts of hostile flora and fauna. Yep. And so they attempt to escape, but in doing so, Buzz crashes the big colony ship and they're stranded there. And so through various attempts to – and now the hyperdrive is damaged. Yep. And so he's got to do various they, – they, they, Hyperdrive they, tests. They build a lot of – they build a little settlement and they're like, and he's like, I'm going to – this is my fault and I'm going to do a lot of hyperdrive tests. And due to relativistic time travel effects mm-hmm. – uh, which he didn't know about apparently. Which I guess it, despite he's he's the rocket man. He's got he's got all the science he doesn't understand. It's true. Um, due to all these time travel effects, every time he does a, a hyperspeed, does a rocket man, he does a rocket man. He comes back and the world has moved on years and years and years. Yeah. Until eventually, everyone he was friends with is dead. Yes. And and I, and robots have invaded. And there's only a ragtag team of Buzz Lightyears, of, of uh, little Buzz Lightyears, and they've all got to team up and stop this this uh, robot invasion and fix everything. And yeah. it's a whole disaster. And he's it's just the thing about it is, I think <laughs> that it's a Pixar movie. Yeah, and Pixar movies traditionally are about something. You know, whether they're about you know 
giving up childish things or about uh, – what's another thing they could be about? Having your house escape. Having your house escape and you've got to go back and get your house. But that And that's about – you know, that's about all oh, – you know, you never, you know, you, you know, you never too old for adventure. You're never too old for adventure, and even if you've experienced some loss, there's more out there. And shut up! Yeah, the, and he should shut up. This old guy should shut up. <laughs> he should get on his balloons and he should float far away. But there are there are always there are about things. But presumably, the movie that Andy watched in the cinemas wasn't about anything. It was because in 1995, the only people making animated movies that were about anything were Pixar. Yeah. The, somebody else making this, it would just been a brainless, dumb kids' action movie, right? Well, I think so. What? I, so I guess my point here is, yeah, when they've gone to make Lightyear, the movie that that Andy saw, they've gone, well, we're Pixar, and we make movies that are about things. Mm. We have to give layers of meaning and and. See, I think they shouldn't have done that. Because... Well, like, but that's the thing; <laughs> they have to. They can't if they were just like, okay, this is a. Um, because there's also that animated Buzz Lightyear show. It's Buzz exactly, Lightyear yeah. and Star Command or whatever, which I've not seen, but I presume that's just like he's off exploring and yes. there's, there's some aliens, there's aliens and whatever. And then yeah. he has to do a big spaceship yeah. battle or whatever, and then that's the end of the episode. It's, they're not about anything. But this they went, well, it has to be about – has to be about – Loss and grief and family. Loss and grief and, and family and whatever. And whatever. Yeah. Be- because otherwise people would be like, this wasn't very Pixar – but I kind of feel like maybe it should have just been. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's I think it's too complicated for kids, but also not complicated enough for adults. Like mm. in for what it's like, it's not interstellar. It's like in, like you mentioned, it's like interstellar light. And then they try to wedge in this like, oh, I'm alone and all my family and I'm sad. And it's like this. Shut up. Remember, like, when, this is... remember when we were ten years old? And we went to see Interstellar James. And we <laughs> we bought our exactly. Ma- we got like... our Matthew McConaughey action figures. Well, that's when I saw like the movie Contact. I was a yeah. kid and I'm like, what is this? Like, mm. I don't. It's... I thought Contact was the stuff you put your you wrap your school books in. <laughs> yeah, or your 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 signed picture of the Pope or whatever. Mm. Yeah, but. Yeah, so I just felt like it tried to do all of those things and it's like, oh, he's alone and time's moving on and whatever. But, like, this is the movie that inspired the, yes, the yes. Buzz Lightyear action mm. figures and, and whatever. But Matt, who edits a bunch of videos for us, Mason, yes. he has a theory and you can look at it on his uh, on his Twitter but and presumably also... At Resdolf. Yes, at, on, at, on and what's that, other, what's that other thing? The TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. Is that this isn't... This isn't the movie from 1995. This is the live action remake of the 2D animated series. I it's see. like The Lion King was remade. This right, is the this remake is that. of okay. that. And they had and because it came out in 2022. Yeah. This is the 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 layers of meaning they've added to yes. it, right? So there's a movie called Buzz Lightyear Star Command which I think went straight to DVD uh-huh. on VHS which had Tim Allen voice it. Yeah. And it looks like all the bed sheets and all of the 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 Yeah, and it's cell shaded as well, right? Yeah, no, it's it's just 2D. Right, okay. So, and that, and, and the idea was that then would be that, like, that was a popular kids' kids movie, which then became a spin-off animated series, like Aladdin got a spin-off, and yeah, Hercules right, right. got a spin-off, and Lion King got a spin-off series, didn't it? Well, that was more recently. And so, th- so that's what happened there. And then they went, oh, you know what people love? Fucking Buzz Lightyear. Let's remake Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, right. And then it's like, well, this isn't as good as the... <laughs> that's a great theory, except the movie does literally say... This is that. I movie. agree, but yeah. I think that's wrong. Yeah. Because also, like, the tech doesn't even make any sense. Like, the, they've got an autopilot where it's like you blow into it and it's kind of like a cassette or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But everything else, like, you could have made this aesthetic, like an 80s or 90s, like, sci fi adventure. Like, you could have made it in the vein of, like, Star Wars or, like, Lost in Space or Independence mm-hmm. Day or something like that. But it doesn't, doesn't look like any of that. There's no, like, you could have done a fun kind of. Retro. Oh, you could have added some fun, James. Well, like a fun retro '80s or '90s, you know, sci-fi movie, but it's not. Right. Okay. Like, it, like if you look at Toy Story as well, the movies, like the video game that they're playing uh-huh. in Toy Story Two, just looks like Buzz Lightyear normally looks like. It doesn't look like this. Nothing mm. looks like this. That's true. Yes. So I just don't. I don't know why they. So you're saying this should have been in like the style this. of '80s animation? No, I think or... it should have been in the style of like. A, like a like a Back to the Future or whatever, like that kind of aesthetic. Yeah, right, right, right. And it's not. It's just like whatever a modern mm. Pixar and new yeah, animated I, movie I, looks yeah, like. Yeah, I think some of the t- – like the, the tech we see in the movie, like a lot of it is like big tape cartridges and things like, like that. Like one thing. Yeah, 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 I guess that's true. 
Yeah, I don't know. I just think like it could yeah. have been a cool like cool throwback. Okay, well, let me ask you this: What did you think of it as a movie itself? Just it's, it's whatever, to be honest. Like <laughs> I just think this is a guy, mm-hmm. and and you see this in the TV show as well, the animated stuff where all his mates are like aliens, and he's doing intergalactic adventures, and there's like you know he's like he's a space mm. cop and whatever. He's like a Green Lantern dude. Yeah, yeah. And whereas this is like his mates are just like three normal people. And it's like, that's not fun. Right. He's got like alien buddies and yeah, stuff. And right, he's like right. jetting through space. And this is just like, he's stuck on one planet yeah, with I like the, vines and stuff. Marooned... This is like Buzz Lightyear Origins. It's like, yeah. okay, fine, a I choi- guess. The choice to make it, the choice to make him marooned on one planet, I yeah. think was very odd. Mm. It's just, and it, it feel, again, I, I kind of liked it. I didn't feel like my time was wasted in the cinema, but I was like, this is quite dreary. Yeah. This dreary planet. And it's just... The the you know the the world keeps passing him by and he's just but I mean I guess to him like you know it's maybe just a week or something like that but he's seeing mm. all all the people he knows and the people he went to Stark Ranger Space Ranger Cadet School or whatever getting old and ha- getting married and having children and yeah. he's just like this guy doing this job and he's sad because he marooned everybody there and, yeah because he needs to learn a lesson about. Helping, like, working with other people yeah. and, and whatever. I, like, and we've, James, we've had a lot to say about the Star Wars prequels. Yes. But in, you know, episode three, the opener is just this enormous space battle and people jumping between yeah. starships and that, like, give us that. That's what I'm talking about. Just a about. fun, yeah. silly thing and. The opening of Toy Story 2 where Buzz Lightyear is in a video game. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've ever seen this. You may have. And he's breaking into Zerg's fortress. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible cold open. It's a mate like you should if you haven't watched it, you should just watch it after this. Not I feel while you're I've driving seen, home. I feel I've seen yeah, all the stuff. It's toys so fun. Movies. And I feel like like that's what this should have been. Yeah. It's not fun. He's not mm. and then he's like, I found my wings, I found my laser and whatever. It's like, okay, great. Did you Yeah, it's the orange they've they've absolutely <laughs> gone to I didn't think they would stoop to like it's just how, on his suit. How do you think he got his jetpack? Well, we'll find out. It's on we? his suit. It's yeah. just he just has it. Like, because also, like, the toy doesn't match that. It's, like, built in. Like, it doesn't make sense. Well, by the end, you know. Yeah, I know. But, like, he gets rid of it. He <laughs> no, has but... it for a bit and then he gets, oh, does he have it at the very end? Yeah, they all have it at the very end. Is that a spoiler? End. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, I guess. That's the first thing I'll explain and, like, to you And, like, the ship the... that he has at the end is the one from that he's packaged in and whatever. I know, yeah, right. I know there are attempts to, like, tie it in. But the thing, what I don't have But that's pro- also interesting that because... Animation from that era didn't have an elaborate long origin story. Exactly. Like, yeah, he just we, has it. The Thundercats. Well, the Thundercats kind of had one. But like the 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 thing that I thought of was like Silverhawks yeah. or one of those ones. There, there's not, if any, you know, maybe there's a 20-minute first episode where they explain some stuff. But all that stuff, it's most of it is just like, hey, they're just a space. Like, um... Oh, what's that one? They're all not Brave Star, but they were all like with the standy uppy horse. No, that's that's Brave Star. <laughs> there was one. They were they were like space cops, and they were like cowboy oh, space I know cops. Exactly what you mean, and they yeah. all had different powers, but there was no origin for them. It's just like they're space cops. Yeah, we don't. Nobody, nobody back in 1995 was was like we need a really long elaborate. Children need a really long elaborate story as to how this character started out and now is a toy. Yeah, exactly. They were just they started as a toy and then they went on an adventure and then they were the they would st- remained the toy. Yeah. That's right. And look, yeah. I think also it's not even it's called I found the show. I found a picture of it. Star Boys. Adventures in Galac- Adventures of the Galactic Rangers. Adventures there of the it Galactic is. Rangers. Yeah, 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 Galactic Rangers. There yeah, we go. No, That'll yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, look, what I don't have a problem with with any of the cast. I think it's totally okay to recast Chris Evans cuz you could say like Tim Allen voices the toys because they don't they don't always get the star of the yeah, movie right, to voice right. the toys. I think I think all the like you know Taika Waititi's in it. Like Chris Evans is good. Whoever does the cat and these mates and whatever, they're, sure, they're sure. all fine. And I lo- and I I don't have a problem with recasting Buzz Lightyear because they're always cast recasting Buzz Lightyear. Patrick Warburton, uh, is that oh, yeah. he's been he's been him in the animated series. Uh-huh. Like there's been other shorts that have been voiced by other people as well. It's just this is a newer version of Buzz Lightyear and it's. And it's Chris Evans. I've got a quote here from the director who says, uh, Tim's version of Buzz Lightyear is a little goofier and a little dumber. So he's the comic relief. In this film, Buzz is the action hero. He's serious and ambitious and funny, but not in a goofy way that would undercut the drama. Chris Evans has the gravitas and that movie star quality that our character needs to separate him and the movie from Tim's version of the story in Toy Story. See, I don't have a problem with any of that. Right, right, right. It's like, because, you know, because the kids, you know, there was like Terminator 2 action figures and shit. There sure was, And they were nothing like the movie, but I feel like, 
and it's easy to say like, why didn't you make Star Wars? But like, I, I th- oh, just James, just imagine a Terminator <laughs> Two action figure playset, right? And it's that security guard at the mental institution. He's war. You, you set him on the checkerboard floor, yeah. and then you push a button, and an identical version of him pops up and stabs him through the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stabbing through the eye stabbing action. Through the eye action, but. Yeah, like, uh, again, like, not that you, it's easy to be like, just make Star Wars, but I think a Star Wars style adventure mm. would have been a movie that a kid would have fallen in love with. Yeah. No kid is falling in love with this. Uh, yeah. I mean, remains to be seen, but probably not, yeah. honestly. Um, and also, I think maybe he could have just been dumb Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, Why totally. Not? Because, in the, like, he has a, I guess the learning experience he has in this movie is. He wants to be. He doesn't like rookies, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't. They, he he thinks other people drag him down, mm. and eventually he learns to work with people. But I'm, it was pretty. It was it was just like, uh, you know, I don't like working with. Uh, I don't like working with rookies. Well, you like working with me, I guess so. I don't want to work with you guys. Well, you have to. Okay, I guess I will. I think it would have been interesting if he was like a blowhard. Yes, and, right. And he didn't want to work with people, and then he's like, "I'm an idiot. I need." And Chris Evans can be the blowhard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've seen from him do not it. another teen movie from Knives Out. He's Knives big, Out. He's a big. He's a big blowhard. Knives, Knives Out one, as we call it now. Yes, one Knives Out, please. <laughs> yeah, I just think it kind of. I mean, it it does go places, but it literally doesn't like go anywhere. Like. Mm. Like, it's just kind of that one planet, it feels very self-contained in, like, a claustrophobic way. Yeah. There's no big kind of space, like, epic adventure. Like, yet they work in things like Zerg and, like, other – and he says a bunch of the lines, and I don't have a problem with that because it's mm. the, he's an action figure, right? But it just feels really small. Mm, it does, and, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and serious for – for no, it's not very funny at all, really, True, is it? yes. I, I, like, the cat was, like, you know, it had its moments, and I liked the cat, but just – Mm. whatever's man yeah um, uh, we'll do a little bit of spoilers i am gonna say worst movie ever i think it completely like missed the mark on what this should have been mm. technically it's great yeah um like uh, the voice cast is all very good um you know there's a it, it's it's disney's first gay character again <laughs> sure yeah been. great congratulations <laughs> to disney you've done it again <laughs> yeah really breaking new ground yeah but uh, just make him gay. Make Buzz Lightyear gay. Yeah, that great, been, sure. That would have been fine. He doesn't, you know, he, oh, is he with Jesse? It's a toy. It's different. It doesn't it's matter. It's true, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, the toy is canonically not gay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I am going to say worst movie ever. I just think it's um, it's just not. Man. Not I might give out great. a rare, a very rare for me, I think, just a movie. You can't do it, Mason. It's one or the other. Oh, have we done that? We've, we made the, you've given out just a movie. I think, did I? Yeah. To Batman, I think. Oh. Someone did I? No, I gave Batman a best movie ever. Yeah, Batman yeah, v Superman. Okay. Hmm. You, don't All right, have to, well, you don't have to commit to anything. No, I, I, I must. I simply must commit. Ah, uh, because it's the thing. I is, mean, I think if you're umming and ahhing, it's probably best, right? No, I was going to say if, I think if I'm umming and ahhing, it's probably worst. Mm, would you? I've not seen it. Do again, you think you so would have liked this as a kid? Maybe, but if I didn't have the context of Toy Story. Mm. I think I maybe would have liked it if it was completely unattached to anything. Okay. But I think if I, like you said, I think if I'd seen Toy Story and loved that and then they immediately went to this, I'd be, I don't I'd know. Be impressed technically, but I think I'd be like, oh, this is okay. I, think if I thought it, this would be more fun. I think if it, if it was unattached, if this was an entirely new property, it would be confusing. It would be like, why is this all happening? That's why, true. Why is, yeah. why is he... Why is he doing these things? Look, I'm okay. I'm going to go with worst movie ever. I'm not going to. say I was not thrilled, and I'm never going to watch it again. I don't think. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, spoilers for this spoilers. movie. I guess. What was the thing I was going to explain? Uh, to you? Oh, at the end. No, at the end of the movie. Oh, okay. Uh, they all get new. All the heroes get new uh, space ranger suits. Okay. And they have the laser and the and the wing pack built in. Are they? Is it the same? Because is it part of the suit? As in, like the same color scheme? Yeah, it's the part of the suit. Okay. I, I, yeah, no, yeah. but I mean, like, because you know, it's got like it's like a it's an ejector seat. So um, that's where he first gets it. Yes, but in this, it's built into the backpack, and it's like a prop. It's like the proper. Yeah, look, they the look suit. more like the toy. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I apologize. You should. They got it right. They did get it right. <laughs> they sh- how, showing how he got his wings. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, so in the Toy Story show movies as well, mm-hmm. the toy Zerg is Buzz Lightyear's dad. Okay, right. And that's why when he pops out, he thinks it's his father, okay, but it's right. actually old Buzz Lightyear from the future. Yes, they've um they've the lost they've lost in space. It. Have you ever seen that movie? Yes, of course I've seen it. But the, so the villain Zerg is actually old Buzz Lightyear, and I 
Uh, okay. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Is he? he sure is, yeah. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with changing the law behind Zerg because it's just the toys are all insane. They're all like, they're all, they don't know where they are, what reality That's true, they're yeah. In. <laughs> they're yeah. All, they, <laughs> Maybe they misread the back of the box they yeah. were in. Who knows, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just thought that's okay, I guess. That's the, okay. the movie you've made. So the premise is that he... You could just not put Zerg in it also. Make it a different threat if you, you know, I don't know. No, but they couldn't because Zerg is an established part of... Kong oh, yeah, that's so true, I to, guess. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, the, so this version of Buzz Lightyear uh, didn't want to be... Wanted to keep doing hyperspace tests, but then hyperspaced himself into the far future where yep. he... The, f- the future or just a long... The future away. The future, and he found some alien technology, some super high-tech alien yeah. technology, and then he decided that what he's going to do is he's going to use the hyperspace fuel to go back in time and reverse what happened initially on the crashed planet so that he can just be a cool young space ranger again and just yep. erase everything. But then present-day Buzz Lightyear is like, no, because if you do that, you'll erase you know, all the lives of people, all the lives of the people and and families and what have you, and my new friends. Yeah, and he's like, can't do that. And when when he was like, I'm gonna fix it. So I was like, yeah, if you yeah, if you want, like I don't care. You can fix it if you want, or don't. <laughs> right, right, it doesn't right. matter to me. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you reverse time here or don't. <laughs> really, you know. Yeah, I I just um because I I think one of these things that should be the moral quandary you present to children. <laughs> I mean, sure you'd erase these people on this world, but do you care? And perhaps you would also, you know, perhaps if I went back in time and erased these people, I could go in Space Ranger and stop a war that killed billions. <laughs> what about that, children? Now you have to choose, and there's the little dial on every seat, <laughs> and, and all the kids have to decide. Oh, I would love that. Mm. Yeah. And it just the screen goes black, and the text just says, "You killed Buzz Lightyear." <laughs> <The movie ends. laughs> you killed Buzz Lightyear and all his little toy friends. <laughs> it's just that whatever you choose, yep. you've killed Buzz Lightyear. Uh, yeah, I just I didn't think it's the Dark Souls death. You know, the little death scroll that just says you died. Yeah, it says you killed Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. boom. <laughs> you no, know, like I, I really liked Luca. And I really liked like turning red. Like I feel like oh, yeah. I felt something in those. I thought you were describing characters from this movie, but then no, I like, you were... yeah, I, I thought those were like, and they were. A, and Luke is a very basic story. It's about a fish boy. Get it? Yeah, two fish boys who want to win a bike race, but it's really about it's about sexuality. What's that kid gonna whatever. run a bloody bike race if he's got fish? 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 Boy How's he get, fish well, legs. when he's out, of the, he doesn't have fish boy. When yeah, he's yeah, out. yeah. Have you seen it? No, it's really fun. And I just, I didn't really, I didn't get any of that from this. Like I didn't, I think it should have really, again, leaned into that early, like the eighties, nineties sci-fi yeah. and just kind of, you put your message in it, but it doesn't have to be so obvious that I'm alone and I'm afraid and I've, I've look at all my mistakes and my yeah. past has come back to haunt me or my future has or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, but I didn't. Grim. I didn't get, yeah, but only, not only like, I think that could work, but I don't, I didn't care about any of that either. Mm. So, again. well, James, it's okay because the next one there'll be Space Ranger Adventures where he wears the Space Ranger suit and he's got the laser and the jetpack. So, yeah, so all wait. we have to do is wait four years and there'll be another one. <laughs> so, wow, I can't wait. Anyways, I think this will probably do well initially, but I don't know. I don't know how people are actually going to respond to this. Mm. Um, it might be just us. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, Levens hated it, didn't he? Our friend. Andrew what did he Levins? say about it? Because uh, it was t- the same kind of vibe. It was like I can't imagine how um, a kid would be in, would want to buy the toys after this or something. Let's have a look. <laughs> Lightyear's premise that it's a movie from 1995 that a 10 year old loved is impossible, given that it's a slow, dull, nothing movie that at no point portrays Buzz as a hero that any sane kid would want the toy of. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not inaccurate. Mm. Mm. There you have it, eh? There you have it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm excited for um, four years' time. Yeah. Just in general. Or they could fast track. No, I just mean in general. Imagine oh, four yeah, years yeah. from now. Oh, my God. Incredible. I think it's going to be oh, really fun. Oh, my God. Fun. Can you imagine the pie technology in four years from now? I don't think they're going to. Re- no, it'll like, be the it's same. It's like going to Mars. We're not really yeah. doing it. If anything, We're talking about it. We're not doing it, If Mason. anything, pies in the future will probably be worse because they'll be like, we're making, a low pie, we're making a low carb pie crust that tastes just as good. And you're like, <laughs> no, you aren't. This is worse. <laughs> this is so bad. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this low carb pie, and we've made it out. Of, we made the meat out of bugs. Yeah, exactly. It'd be a bug pie, wouldn't it? Mm. You guys like bugs, don't you? No, <laughs> nobody likes bugs. Nobody wants to eat bugs. I wouldn't mind bugs. What are you gonna eat? Like a bug burger patty, I think would probably be pretty good. I don't think you would like that. I'm gonna give it a. If you could eat that or a regular burger, what regular would you burger, like? every yeah, time. exactly. 
I wouldn't try that on the menu. Oh, what I would do if I went to a place. I need a like a substitute, like a fake right. meat or whatever. What I would do is I would if if that if we were going to the pub mm. and they had a bug burger and a regular burger, I'd order both, and then I'd try the bug burger and be like, "This is actually not bad." And then I would try to have the regular burger and go, "Oh my god, incredible!" Yeah. I love this. this one was just bugs. Yeah, this is when I now that I think about it, what you've done there is you've made a patty out of bugs. What kind of bugs though? You know, it's just like ugh. there's not a lot of meat on bugs, is there? Yeah, but they mush it. Yeah, I don't look. Like I don't know that. what the process is. All right. Uh, yeah, it just seems like you. <laughs> and I don't want to know. It just seems like you're actually for this, and I don't just don't think it's. Oh, the dystopian future where we all have to. Wear I don't bugs. think it's right. Oh, yeah. it's not. No, for yeah. sure. Anyways, let's move it along. Can okay. You... Uh, side note: uh, Alexi does not think there is a. Movie that was not a musical that has a sequel that is a musical. So perfect, thank and, you, Alexi. And Alexi is pretty much the like he's the guy we know yeah. knows the most about movies. That's right. By that knows anything because we don't know anything. <laughs> but uh, but for a normal person, we know too much. Exactly right. Yeah. We're we're right in the wrong sweet spot. <laughs> we're in the sour spot of movies. <laughs> All right, Jim. It's time for it's time for what we read. What are we gonna read? What are we gonna read? Yeah. I'm doing the thing. What are you doing there? Doing West a little dance. dance. West world again. Oh, that's the West world dance. That's it's terrific. Fucking things on loop. <laughs> what are you up to, Mason? Tell you what, James. Yeah. A bit of sad news. Oh. Uh, the, uh, an actor did pass away this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name's Philip Baker Hall. You probably don't know the name. I'll show you a photo. Please do. But he's sort of a an older actor. He's ninety years old. He's got uh, he's got a certain gravitas and oh, like bags course. under yes, his yes, eyes. Yes, yes, yes. And he's yes. sort of very. He's a, he's a character actor and he's been in... He's the librarian in Seinfeld. Well, I was going to say, he's been, he was in, he's, in, he's been in Boogie Nights, he was in Magnolia, he was in Argo, he was in Zodiac. Uh, he was in Zodiac. Yeah, he was in The Talent of Mr. Ripley. But yeah, he's probably, he's probably best known to us as uh, Mr. Bookman, mm. who is the New York Public Library's in-house detective in an episode of Seinfeld in which he is pursuing Jerry because Jerry apparently took out a book in the early 70s and never returned it, so he's been tracking him down. Yeah. And, and Jerry's concerned that, like, the, the overdue fines on the book are going to be, like, $50,000. <laughs> and there's a just – you would have – if you look up his name on Twitter this week, you will absolutely find the scene where he confronts Jerry in his apartment yeah. and gives him a big, like, rant about how – it's not it's not the it's not the money it's the principle of like you took the book out and so kids can't see what they need to see in this book all and the, now he's a pervert yeah all the, all the, yeah and he's a pervert he's like listen up joy boy yeah. and it's just I don't know how many takes they needed but the, the one that went to air it's just Jerry trying not to laugh <laughs> yeah, at this, time, at yeah. this, this entire time anyway he's great but he as a character actor he didn't get a lot of leads but he's in Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie he's in, he's in the lead it's, oh is he? it's called Heart Eight. Okay, it's on Stan if you're in Australia, but it's it's um he plays like a like an older gambler and he's got kind of a checkered past and he meets this down on his luck gambler outside Nevada, like right. John C. Riley, ah. and he like takes him under his wing and he and he kind of like here's here's how you gamble and here's how you do it right kind of thing and there's some drama, but it's uh it's him and John C. Riley and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's in it and Samuel L. Jackson's in it. Oh wow, it's good. I've never heard of this. Right? I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, give it a whirl. It's from the nineties. It's uh yeah. Great. So, I was like, he's from the 90s. I know, right? We what a the... missed opportunity. <laughs> it's not this movie. That no, no, no. It's, it's, really it's good. Great. That being said, I did what I recently I watched a movie I mentioned on here called The Card Counter. It's a Paul Schrader movie. It's got oh, Oscar yeah. Isaac in it. Very similar plots. Oh, really? Fascinating how close they are. Mm, yeah. Maybe um, Go it's on. a coincidence. It's probably a coincidence. Great. Yeah. Do you know what I'm reading? What are you reading? I read Batman Fortress. I talked about it last week. Oh, Batman's uh, got a lot of computers. That Batman's one. got a lot of computers. Uh, Gary Witter and Derek Robertson. So there's a there's a global blackout, uh-huh, uh-huh. and they and they think it's Batman thinks it might be aliens, but he can't tell Whoa. because everything's out. Okay. Uh, so it's and Superman's disappeared. Oh. So it's like, what's going on? And it's Batman trying to figure it out. He's also it's clearly I don't think it's set in any kind of regular continuity. It's, it's Batman kind of and a lot of the characters have a very distinct voice. It's like. Oh, that's a oh. Bad so one. it's like could be could be said anyway. It's yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. it's a standalone, which is what, what I is. like um, yeah, right. as well. I, I like it when like oh, it's, it's, like it's, it's 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 all Batman, obviously. But there's a few things where you're like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay, yeah. There's there's like a line about like he says something to Jim Gordon, are we friends? Like Jim Gordon says, are we friends? And Batman's like, like well, I guess we're friends in the sense that we're two people <laughs> who don't trust each other, and like when one of us is wearing a mask or something, oh, something yeah, right, like right. that. There's this. It's good. I re- it's only one wow. issue at the moment. The next one's out like end of this mm. month. But I do you think it. Jim Gordon then went home and went, "Oh, I thought we were friends. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should wear a mask. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Is that what's <laughs> Maybe we could be mask friends. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, if you like Batman, I think it's uh, it's interesting. I do like Batman. To, uh, to give it a look see. In a lot of ways, that's the entire premise of this show, that Agreed. we like Batman and Batman-related characters and Buzz Lightyear and Buzz Lightyear-related characters. It is. That is right. Mm-hmm. What are you? Uh, what else have you been up to? You watched some more Ms. Marvel, I assume? No, I'm behind. They made a mistake releasing that at the same time as Obi-Wan because it's the lowest... It's it's the lowest debut of a Marvel Disney Plus show. Oh, because they come out the same day, yeah, right? Yeah, same day. I I because I watched everyone on Wednesday and I forgot right. that it came out. And then I was like, oh, what am I gonna do now? I wonder Whatever. if they were And then ba- I'm like, oh shit, Ms. Marvel's out. I wonder if they were banking on people going, Oh, I watched one, now I'll watch the other. But it if I mean to do that it would have to like play immediately. It after, would, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it doesn't. It so, should. I mean, yeah. the algorithm should go. You like this crap? Mm. Have some more crap. You like crap? Let's, let's shovel yeah. some more crap in you. Yeah. Anyway, it's good. I, I like okay. it. I I'm behind really on The Boys. I'm behind on Obi-Wan. I'm behind on Ms. Marvel. You're going to have to catch up because we're going to do our Obi-Wan review this week, Mason. I'll be done by then, yes. Okay, good. Okay, great. Terrific. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. People, are, people have some hot opinions about Obi-Wan and I have just a regular opinion, I think. <laughs> no. Of it, of it, you know? Have you considered raising the temp of your opinion to I hot, could, hot, I could hot. maybe see if I could... Drudge up some something. Terrific. You know? <laughs> sure, yeah, great. Anything else you've been looking no, into? No, I think that's about everything this well, week. Yeah. I love the way that you bring ideas and it's... also letters theme songs. I love the two things well, that I'm you gonna do. Bring, I'm not going to bring any ideas currently, okay. but I'm going to bring the letters theme songs. That's so okay, man. That's cool. Here it goes. The classic one was letters, oh, letters. We love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. <laughs> We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters. <laughs> What you're bringing this episode, James, is great for the listeners. Yep. A series of funny little faces and funny little dances. It's true. Little cheeky, I would say cheeky faces. Yes, that's right. You're like, ooh, I'm a bad little boy. That's me. You know? Mason. Can you believe what I'm doing? A little dance? Is it true, Mason? Go on. That uh, in the later segment of the show, mm-hmm, go you, on. you read through our Gmails at weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com uh-huh. and I look at Twitter at hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. That's true. And then we converse with the things that people have sent our way. Mm. Is that true? That is very true. What do you got this week? This is from Aaron. Hello, uh, Aaron. Pennsylvania Regional Dispute, because, you know, sometimes we oh, settle I love regional, regional disputes. Dispute. And you're going to love this one. Okay. Uh, and I think there's a there's a clear answer on, on this one, and you'll know why as soon as I is get to it. Is it a bug thing? No, it's not a bug thing. Hey, guys, my name's AJ. Hello. Aaron. And I'm Which from... is it? Is this the dispute? <laughs> this is the dispute. <laughs> Hey, I'm from Pennsylvania in the US. A few years ago, I moved to Ireland, and I want to say thank you for making my hour and a half commutes to work in Dublin a bit more bearable. They wow. sound like they'd be lovely. I think a, that's, a little commute. That's a long time. It is a long time. Wait, I assume that's for the day, right? Not either way. There's an hour and a half commutes to work. So oh, that's a long. How's he get home? I don't know. I'm hoping you. T- yeah, you know what? A, a long trip on like a train or something. That's nice. I think. Yeah, you can sit yeah. back and yeah, an hour and a half driving. No good. Nah, sucks. Uh, Back home in Pennsylvania, we have a passionate regional dispute that you could lay to rest. We make a dessert that looks like a sandwich consisting of two buns, usually made out of chocolate cake batter with frosting in between. Now, here's the, here's the, you'll know, you'll. So it's cake with frosting. Yeah, yeah, They've yeah. Turn it inside out. I've turned it inside out. Okay, but James, here's here's the thing. Okay. Some of us, like my misguided friend Tyler, call them gobs. <laughs> okay. And and some. Wait, no, some, some of us call them gobs, but some, like my misguided friend Tyler, call them whoopee pies. If we could all come to an agreement on this, it would truly unite all Pennsylvanians for all time. These look amazing, by the right? way. Yeah. Have you seen these? No, I have not seen them. Look at this. Oh, yeah. We get something like that in Australia. Yeah, god damn. Yeah. It's like a big cookie kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't want to call anything a gob. No, what's the other name? Whoopie pie. I mean, I, that's not I, great. I've heard that before, yeah. I'm in sure. In Australia, gob means something entirely different. Yeah, you can't say that. Yeah, you can't say You can't go into a shop and ask for a gob. <laughs> well, it depends on the shop. <laughs> if it's a shop that specializes in that, yeah. you could probably ask. <laughs> it says, uh, there is no difference between a gob and a whoopie pie. Wow. Different regions simply refer to them by different names. In okay. fact, several different states... No, nah, you can't call them a gob. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> if you could come up with a third option that is better. Yeah, whoopie than... pie is terrible. That's it's a really terrible... bad. Yeah. It implies that you'd sit on it. Yeah, like which a is cushion. a whole other genre. Oh, is it because creep... it looks like a whoopee cushion? I is guess. Okay. Interesting. Why is it called a whoopie <laughs> pie? Oh my goodness. The name originated from the Amish men who, uh, when they found these treats in their lunch boxes, would exclaim whoopee. Wow. <laughs> That's made up, right? Yeah, it seems made up, doesn't it? Yeah, so there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, it's also alternatively called a black moon. I like that. Uh, yeah, or Bob, or no. a big fa- uh, or a BFO, a big fat Oreo. 
I like the black. Was it Black Moon? Did you say? Yeah. That? I like that one. It's we're calling it that. All right, done and done. There we go. Uh, Mason, I've got a tweet here from Jack who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. A good topic for the podcast is scariest movie and TV villains. For example, the scariest villain for me is Homelander. He is terrifying. That's a good idea. Isn't it wouldn't it? have to be like a horror movie icon either. It could just be like, that's a spooky guy. Yeah, yeah. I would pick Mr. Boogity. What about uh, Bureaucracy? That's scary. Mm, that it? is, isn't it? Mm. You're talking about the the... The, what's that movie where Matt Damon's putting on hats and running through doorways? Oh, the Adjustment Bureau. Yes. <laughs> yes Is that bureaucracy? That's probably bureaucracy or time or something. Or time or something. That's yeah. a great uh, idea, Jack, and maybe we'll, we'll come back to that at some point. I, mm. I love that suggestion. That's right. Uh, this is from Danon. Danon. He says, I made a movie for James and Meso if he wants it. Wow. Hello. What, if, you assume that I want it? Yeah, yeah. I made a movie for James. He'll like this. You love all movies. You've said that before. That's true. I yeah. loved everything. Been a fan for a long time and finally worked up the courage to write in. I recently finished my Avatar The Last Airbender, fa- Airbender fan film about Toph. Ah. I assume that's a character that you, you were familiar with, James. Yep. And wanted to ask if you guys have any favorite fan films that come to mind. Anyways, thanks for everything you guys do. I linked the film here in case you guys wanted to take a look. So, folks, HTTPS colon slash slash uh, – Y-O-U-T-U dot B-E slash P underscore capital G, lowercase G, capital A, capital H, uh, under, lower, lowercase D, five, lowercase S, lowercase I, capital E. Is it, uh, is it um, a YouTube link? Or is yes. It, can you click on the link? Is it live action or is it? I'm going to click it right now. Or is it um, I'm it right animations? Now, I'm clicking it right now. It's got a million views. Whoa. It doesn't need us. Nah. Yeah. Toph and Avatar fan film. T O T O P H. Yeah, they did announce this week that they um live action does that. All, all sorts of stuff. They happening. announced this week that yeah, it's, they're making and it's got eighty nine thousand likes. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, oh yeah, she's the blind girl who does the yeah. That's cool, man. I'd forgotten which <laughs> character that was. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, they announced three new animated films coming from that. Oh my goodness! As well, yeah. Well, that got this has got heaps of traction. Good for him, man. That's great. Uh, some Jeremy H. Prowl. Oh, fan film, sorry. Yes, yes. Um, I love a Star Wars fan film, good or bad. I know okay. a lot of people said, like, uh, you know this stuff in Obi-Wan? It just looks like a fan film. I've seen some of these Darth Vader <laughs> fan films, and let me tell you, uh, okay. they're not maybe what you think they are. Do you like a Star Wars fan film where everybody's gone absolutely ham with those lightsabers? No, I don't. Or do you prefer a slow, contemplative one? I think there's definitely something to be said of that, and there's some really good ones, for example. Uh, there's one called uh, Darth Maul Apprentice, which I quite like. <laughs> um, there's one I've talked about before where... There's a guy trapped on a uh, on a whatever. There's, no, it's a it's a rebel who's been left behind on Hoth, mm. and it uses like stop motion and stuff in it, which is which is quite cool. Um, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of them that I that I do enjoy. What what about you? Do you like a Batman versus Predator I fan could, yeah, film I do, or something yes, like that? Yes, yeah. that fan film. I can't remember what it's called, but there's that one where he's hunting the Joker and then it turns out... It's the Predator. The Predator is there. Yes. That one looks incredible. And I feel but, I feel the arrival of the Predator kind of lets it down. Kind of ruins it, yeah. Is it the aliens and the Predator? I think it is aliens and Predators, yeah. yeah. Like, like from a production standpoint and like lighting and all that sort of stuff, I remember that looking incredible. Yeah. And then being like... Oh, and the hunt- suit, I remember the suit The suit looks good, really yeah. good and I'm like... And he was like a big, a big... Uh, he's a big Batman. Like a big wide Batman, like... Imagine like Adam West Batman, but like not like ripped. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, and that that Big. looked really. But I th- I feel like I remember watching that and going, oh, this is great. And then it was sort of undercut by the aliens and predator thing. I think yeah. if it was just Batman fighting the Joker, uh, one I think we've maybe mentioned before is Minty, which is the Judge oh, yeah, yeah. Red. Oh, I like uh, Minty fan a lot, yeah. film, which is about a, a, a former Judge Minty yes. who is taking the long walk into the cursed Earth. I like that, that one was a really lot. Good, yeah. There's one that I like, which is is which is just two people going ham on each other. It's Darth Vader. Porno. It's a porno. It's Darth Vader versus Batman or something. Oh, you like that one? Well, You're that right. one's just insane, and I, I yeah, like okay, how right, insane right. that one is. Yeah. So I didn't say I don't mind people going ham on each other in certain things. I should. Sure. I should specify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any, oh, I've got one here, Mason. Go uh, on. From Jeremy H. Prow, eighty-seven. He says, "My daughter calls you the Lettuce Boys because on the lettuce theme play, she thought you said lettuce. She knows it's letters now, but doesn't care. Neither do I. Just thought you should know. Love the show. Keep up the keep up the lettuce, boys. We are saying lettuce. Yes, that's right. She was right. The uh, the the vegetable. We are saying lettuce. There's a big lettuce shortage in Australia. There's a lettuce shortage in moment. Australia. They're putting cabbage in in our KFC wraps, and people aren't having it. I'll be honest. 
Couldn't tell you what the difference is. I mean, why would just put nothing in? Just put nothing People in. People don't want it. Put spinach in. I'd rather spinach, quite frankly. Or nothing. You, whenever we go to a KFC or a Red Rooster, you get you get the lettuce taken out anyway, don't you? But if they gave me a spinach option, I would take the spinach. Interesting. Yeah, but they, they, they Ooh. very interesting, right? Ooh. I'm very interesting. That's the most. Look interesting. how interesting thing. I, look how interesting I am. <laughs> you're very interesting. I'm very. I bet interesting. the people who make it think you're interesting as well. That's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the most interesting thing a man has ever done yeah. in, this, in this KFC or Red Rooster? The, the thing, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it not ordering, taking the lettuce out? And they're like, sure, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's super You're interesting. very interesting. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. We love how interesting you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's one more email. I love one more email. It's from Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Uh, my name's Ethan and I'm a paleontologist from Utah. Oh, my God. We recently talked about Jurassic Park Dominion World. Probably why he's emailed in. Well, let's find out. Let's not jump ahead. Okay. I just listened to all your Jurassic Park Caravan of Garbages and your Jurassic World Dominion review. Uh, just stop you there. This is about the Jurassic World Dominion. Um, that's why he's right. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't say specific. He just says, I have listened to all <laughs> okay. of them. But he doesn't say specifically and then, and as a result of that, I decided to do that. <laughs> yep. That's faulty reasoning on your behalf. Okay, you're right. You're right. Let's yeah, wait. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had a great time listening to you guys bash and break down the only consistently running dinosaur series. Yep. I just wish we had more out there. Uh, I love Jurassic stuff as much as anyone. I even helped design the battle at Big Rock Allosaurus. Oh, I love that short. There you go. That one, you know, we watched that one. It's like the one set between the last two movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, It's the best Jurassic Park thing other than the first movie. (laughs) There it is. Yeah. Uh, But I wish dinosaurs were taken seriously in pop culture again. If you want a fantastic dinosaur series to take a look at that shows accurate dinosaurs in their own environment, check out Prehistoric Planet on Apple TV. I know. I got to get to it. High budget show produced by Jon Favreau with music by Hans Zimmer that shows how incredible and amazing dinosaurs were. Also, as a person who literally specializes in T-Rex, it should have taken the Spinosaurus cl- uh, head clear clear off so you could see down the neck hole. I knew it. There you go. Both of us knew it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. There you go. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I will watch that because I loved Walking with Dinosaurs when that came out. Like I should just say, if, if I mean, we got to the end of the email oh, sorry. and he didn't say as a result of watching. As this a re- is, so this is a coincidence. This is a coincidence. Could it could be a coincidence. Let's it not could, even assume that. It could be a coincidence. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah, true. I want to watch that with my son. Um mm. The dinosaur one. Terrific. You know, because he's a person, because he's a child and <laughs> that's all they like. That's true. And and they like the Buzz Lightyear movies as they're watching them, but not not beyond that point. Mm. Yeah. To, an inf- to infinity, but not beyond that, all right? <laughs> Stop. To, inf- to right infinity there. and a, a certain point, I guess. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the show? That is the whole show, folks. Thank you I so much. I hate it when the end of the show, Mason. I just wish this show could go forever. Let's do it. I've got people coming around. We have to wrap it up. Yeah, we've got like two minutes. So. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you for uh, subscribing to the podcast on your podcast platform of choice. Thank you for telling your friends about it. And thank you for uh, leaving a nice five-star review on your podcast platform of choice because that is how we get new listeners. Also, the telling people about it. Yeah, that's true. Both of those things. Yeah, you can tell people on a, on a, on a digital platform also. Right. Some people might be like, what's your favorite podcast? And then you say this. Or some people might be like, hey, um, I, my Intel Pentium, whatever, I'm not sure the screen's got one of those lines across it. Is there any way that you could perhaps, like, does anyone know how to fix that? Weekly Planet Podcast. <laughs> That's right. You could be in a Teams meeting on a Slack channel or something yeah. or, a, or a Zoom meeting. Yep. And, and – they could be like, uh, you seem really distracted. I'm, mm-hmm. your, your work seems to be suffering. And it's like, because I'm listening to the Weekly Planet. You're fired. And then you're like, cool, man, thanks. Yeah, nice. Uh, you could be at a big football match and you hold up a sign that says the Weekly Planet. Yeah. Some people are doing <laughs> Weekly Planet graffiti, I saw. Yeah, that's great. Uh, for a good time, listen to the Weekly yeah, Planet podcast. Yeah. We don't condone that, but if it happens, it happens. I condone it. <laughs> um, you, could be, you could be in a pub trying to convince the chef to make a pie, even yeah. though they don't normally make pies. You yeah. could be like... Listen. What about a shepherd's pie? Would they make a shepherd's pie? Yeah. Seems easier. You just put some potato on top. Wow, that's real. That's a very ignorant statement. I bet there are some pub chefs out there. Oh, oh yeah, just make, just make a shepherd's pie. Hey, man, if you were a real chef, you wouldn't be at a pub. I fucking got you. Well, <laughs> that's, that's not true. I love pub food. Good pub, pub, pub food is incredible, Mason, and I won't have you speak ill of it. Yeah. You get, you, get a, you get a wonderful chicken parma. You get a side salad. You get a gob for dessert, you know? That's what you do. That's right. And then you order a dessert. Yes.
Folks, we did it. Uh, uh, anyway, I've got some reviews here. This is nice. from Gav135246. He says, fantastic podcast. This podcast helped me get through the lockdown in my city. It's absolutely hilarious. Also, I can't hear Tom Holland talk without thinking about Mason's Tom Holland voice. Thanks for ruining Spider-Man for me. You're welcome. Yeah. This one's from Simon OH who says, Australia Wikipedia Brown, another five-star review. Just so easy, just an app. Australia, officially the Commonwealth of Australia, is a sovereign country uh, comprising, uh, the, comprising the mainland of the Australian continent, the island of Tasmania, the numerous smaller islands. It is the largest country by area in Oceania and is the world's large, sixth largest country. Australia's population uh, of, is nearly 26 million in an area of 7,617,930 square kilometres, and it's highly urbanised and heavily concentrated on the eastern seaboard. Canberra is the nation's capital. Boo, let me just say that. While the largest city is Sydney and other major metropolitan areas include Melbourne, Brizzy, Perth, and Radelaide. Uh, yep, that's true. So true, bestie. Yeah. That's what they say. What else happens on this show, Mason? Folks, what we also do is we say if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. You can go uh, find us at weeklyplanetpod at Facebook, at Twitter. See if you can find us. Bandcamp. We bet you can't find us. Well, you can't find us. Uh, we also have Weekly Planet Shorts on YouTube now, true, short yeah. clips. We also, we're also on TikTok There's a as TikTok. well. There's a TikTok. So that's thank right. you to Sarabi and uh, all, all, all the folks. Fidel, can, that's right. Fidel, that's right. You can go to the uh, Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod Reddit and Discord for fun mm-hmm. chats about podcasting and pop culture. Uh, let's see if you want to support the show. You can go to po- oh wait, no, before that you what, can what? Uh, you can uh, follow our friend Rob Collings. He's at Rob Collings on Twitter. He's also at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. That's all the 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 updates, and he does all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, he has this podcast for one thing. That's the coolest thing. He's going to do a backflip this week. I don't know if you saw. He's going to do a backflip. He's been working up to doing a backflip. That's right. He's going to post a video of him doing a backflip this week. That's incredible. Cannot wait for that. If anybody we knew could just be like, I've decided I'm going to work my <laughs> way up to doing a backflip and just do a backflip, I feel it would be Rob Collings. I watched a video this week of somebody working their way up to doing a backflip in a gym. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, I think I can do this. Yeah. Well, I definitely can't, but it made me go, I think I could do this. Wow. <laughs> but I know. can't, Mason. You could never do it. Rob Collings is going to do it, though. He's going to do it, though. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown on Instagram at Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck or any amount you would not miss. You can also go to bigsandwich.co. If you're a big, big spender, you can spend nine US dollars per month yep. uh, for all sorts of bonus podcasts and movie commentaries right. and so forth. Uh, for example, this week we did Thor, uh, Thor, God, God of, of Thunder, Thunder from 2013. We, yeah, we reviewed that and we had a bit of a discussion because, of course, really fun, it yeah. features Gore, the God Butcher, who's going to mm. be in the new Thor movie. Yeah. Um, Thoroughly enjoyed reading that and talking about good one, that. Right? Yeah. It is a very much a good one. Mm. Um, who else can we thank, James? Well, well, if you want, you can go to uh, tpublic.com. Uh, I can. Search for the Weekly Planet. You can buy a uh, Weekly Planet T-shirt of any kind you wish. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rack and Prilla Musical Themes. Thank you to Alexi who confirmed that, in fact, there is not a movie that uh, was not a musical, but then their sequel was a musical. Listen to Alexi and Cam's podcast, Total Reboot. I listened to an episode on the way home from work last night. Uh, it's about Reservoir Dogs. They're doing a, a series about heist movies. Didn't you say you didn't like it, though? You said, I don't like these podcasts. Yeah, I said they're bad podcasts. Okay, cool. Just kidding. I think they're good and funny podcasts. They're funny <laughs> boys. <laughs> they're, they're very funny ep- uh, episode. Uh, people should check that out. I will. Um, and that, I think, is the whole show next week. I think we're going to do some Star Trek related, We right? might. We might we have, have a very special, special guest. guest. It's me. Oh. Yeah. I'm just going to be you, you were saying for like... Last couple of weeks, there was going to be a really special guest. Yeah, it's me. What did you think I meant? It's yeah, me, well, you said Mason. special guest, special, special. Special. It's me. I'm... <laughs> All right, grab that jam, folks. We'll see you next week. It's me, Mason. Oh, that's great, actually. <laughs> I like that. Well, it's always we... fun when you're around. <laughs> Thanks. And goodbye. <laughs>